had to come all the way down from northern Maine. And I've been watching the weather all day long to see what it was like coming from that direction. But she got here. I want to thank you all for coming tonight to the early service. And a few things I want to share with you. The very first thing, the back page of your program for tonight lists those people that have been involved in seeing that the program happens. And I just want to personally thank every single one of those because as we put all the parts together, it makes for the total service for our families the time at, here at 7 o'clock. A little bit of instructions on lighting of the candles. And if I could borrow a couple. I want to be sure everyone has a candle. And at the point later in the service, we will be circling the sanctuary. And don't all bunch up. You know, we'll go all the way around and as far around as we can. But when it comes to lighting your candle, there will be one of our dancers coming to you with a lit candle to start. And the important thing is, the lit candle is not tipped over. You're going to hold the lighted candle. The unlit candle will come over and light from the lit one. Just for safety's sake, to be sure the lighted candle always stays straight. Everybody got that? All right. Thank you. Our offering tonight is some canned goods to share with those in the community that don't have as much food time. And so if you brought a can or a box of food, after the dancers have completed their number with the Holy Night, Everybody have, have the opportunity to come forward and to bring a canned good here or here in front and you will see something happen up here a little bit later. And if there's any children who didn't bring anything, I've got a couple of bags in the back that there are some canned goods or some box goods, you know, some good vegetables and fruits and that special macaroni and cheese. Uh, that's it. So come on to the back and take an item out of the bag as long as it, they last. We've got a great, great service tonight. And I think we can prepare ourselves for worship with the lighting of the advent candles. We have watched, we have waited in hope. <coughs> we have watched and we have waited for peace. And we have watched, and we have waited in joy. And we have watched, and we have waited with love.
in the time for our redemption is near. Would you join me in our call to worship? For a, for a child has been born to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And we join in singing, O come, all ye faithful. of Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, I was sent by God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and she was the cousin of Elizabeth. As I came to her, I said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was very frightened, and I said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. She asked me how that could be, since she had not a husband. And I said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. He will be great, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign forever. His kingdom will have no end. I told her, too, that her cousin Elizabeth was also expecting his son in her old age. Mary did not falter. She said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. When she said this, I departed.
I am Elizabeth, cousin of Mary, who was betrothed to Joseph of Nazareth. In my old age, the Lord sent the angel Gabriel to my husband, Zechariah, and told him I would bear a son. I've been barren for many years, and was far too advanced in years to have a child. <clears throat> but the angel Gabriel said that our son was part of the Lord's plan. He was to be called John, and he was to be the Lord's messenger and filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. He was to prepare the way for Jesus, the Son of God. My cousin Mary came to me in my sixth month, and as she entered the house and greeted me, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I said to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said that she rejoiced in God and in his mercy and might. She said, For he has looked with favor on his lowliest of servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. And Mary stayed with me three months before she returned home. My son John was born, and as the angel said, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He led a life of simplicity and austerity. He turned many people to the Lord in the same spirit and power of Elijah, and prepared the way for the coming of the Lord. For as the prophets of old promised, a child has been born to us, a son is given to us, and authority rests upon his shoulder, and his name is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Joseph of Nazareth. 
I was engaged to a young woman named Mary, and before we had been together, she was found to be with child. I did not know what to do. I am a just man and thought that perhaps I could divorce her quietly. But one evening, in a dream, an angel of the Lord came to me and said, Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. He said she would have a son, and we were to call him Jesus. This was to fulfill the Lord's promise that a virgin would conceive and bear a son, and his name would be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. I awoke from my dream and believed what the angel had said, and I took Mary as my wife. Then a decree came out from Caesar Augustus that everyone was to be registered for a tax, and each person was to be enrolled in his own city. It was necessary for us to travel to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because I was a descendant from the house of David. I took Mary with me. It was a difficult journey, since she was close to her time to give birth. The city was crowded, and we could not find a room. Suddenly, Mary realized that their time had come. One kind innkeeper offered us a stable, and so we took refuge there. It was there that our son was born. We wrapped him in cloth and used a manger as his bed. I remember what the angel had told me, and so, as it was commanded, we called him Jesus. I was with the host of angels who appeared to the shepherds who were keeping the night watch over the flocks. When the shepherds saw us, they were filled with fear. So I said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. When I finished telling the shepherds about the wonderful news of Jesus' birth, a multitude of angels joined me in praising God. And together we said to the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The shepherds were filled with wonder and excitement as we went up in the heavens from where we had come.
I am Mary, the mother of Jesus. My story is one of wonder and amazement. I was a young virgin and engaged to a man named Joseph. When an angel appeared to me and told me I was to give birth to a child, conceived by the Holy Spirit from God. Can you imagine how distraught I was? How could this be? I was a virgin. How could I explain this to Joseph? The angel said not to be afraid and told me God was using me to fulfill his promise that I was favored by God. He told me, too, that my cousin Elizabeth, who was thought to be barren, would give birth to a son even in her old age. I went with haste to Elizabeth. As I greeted her, the baby leaped inside her, and she said I was blessed. I stayed with Elizabeth for three months, and then I returned home. Joseph had thought to divorce me quietly when he heard I was to have a baby. But an angel visited him, too, and explained that this was part of God's plan to bring a Savior into the world. Joseph understood that the angel's message, the angel's message and took me as his wife. It was necessary that we travel to Bethlehem by order of a decree from Caesar Augustus. We were to register in the city of our heritage. So just before I was to give birth, we had, made, had to make an arduous journey. The city was crowded with people, and we could not find a room. When it was evident that the baby was to be born, we found shelter in a stable and placed our newborn son in a manger, since we had not a bed. Shepherds who had been watching the sheep in the fields outside the city came late at night and told us their amazing story. Hosts of angels praising God had announced to them that our son had been born in Bethlehem and could be found in a manger. They came quickly and found us, just as the angel had said. They were filled with awe and excitement. When they left, they were shouting the news to people in the streets. I could not but wonder what was in store for us. For my son, for God's son, who is long, the long-awaited savior of humankind. I have kept these thoughts quietly and have treasured the word of the shepherds. Now I, ponder, now I ponder these things in my heart. My soul magnifies the Lord, and I rejoice in God, my savior.
1950s called Amal and the Night Visitors. And it's part of that opera. The shepherds created a dance and then they went to Bethlehem. And one of the songs that they sung talked about all the, the fruits and vegetables and foods that they brought. And for all those years, I've always said it wasn't only the wise men that came with real gifts, that gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but the lowly shepherds also brought something. And so we gotta ask you to bring forward your gifts to the Christ child. And I'll start with a box of elbow macaroni. Come forward. And children, if you haven't got anything, there's some in the back. It would be in an attitude of prayer. <laughs> Loving God, you have seen our needs and have come to us. At this time, we think of others, and our minds and hearts reach out to them through this act of giving. There are so many who are hurting in this world. Some are right here in our community. Some are in distant lands. Since we were all part of your family, we shared what we have. We rejoice that we can participate in this act of sharing of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to circle the sanctuary with your candle and your <laughs> service program. We'll be singing a couple of carols from along the sides. Larger circle all the way to here. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God is light, and in him there is no darkness. 
If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. the candles are all lit. We will dim the lights in the sanctuary so we can see this light that we have created, that we are shining.
wealthy evening. Um, I invite you to, to walk around the sanctuary um, and take a look at them. Um, we have a few little small ones that we are going to be putting up also. They'll be here for tomorrow morning service as well. I'd like to call Cindy Murray. Merry Christmas to all of you, and may God, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. And the people all said, Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.